Hello and welcome everybody. This is Regional Supplies Shop Talk and I'm Meg from Polytape USA and this is Mona. Hi. And we are both HTV super fans. And today we're going to, you know, present the materials, talk about the products and uh, really answer any questions that you have. We've got a lot of tips and tricks for you. We're going to do some application, which will be fun. And we've got some pretty easy designs, but also a few complicated ones as well. So a little bit about us and what we do and what makes us a little bit different, which affects everybody that uses the product, is that we're a manufacturer. We own our own manufacturing. We are the number one heat transfer material outside of the U.S. We have uh, quite an extensive line of uh, colored flex, printable flex, special effect material, all kinds of things. And we are known for our turbo. Our turbo flex, which you may or may not have worked with before, uh, comes in 50 colors, including neons, metallics, brights, bunch of great colors. And what makes it unique is it's very easy to cut, very easy to weed, and it has a low temp, low time, low pressure application. We're also going to talk about some glitter today. Everybody loves glitter and printables. That's on the, the list of things to talk about. And I would love to know if you could send us some questions or some comments about anything that you want to talk about, whether it's the application process or a spe specific need that you might have or any of the materials that maybe I didn't list yet. That would be great. So welcome again. What I want to tell you about is the first thing that you want to know with HTV, right? And everybody always knows that you have to have the right temperature and the right time. So you have to have a certain temperature that it's going to apply at. That's driven by the manufacturers of the material. And it is at a certain time always. If you don't know what the third one is, you're not alone. A lot of people <laughs> skip this. A lot of the time what will happen is people are like, well, just tell me what the time of temp is. And there's a third part to that equation that often gets overlooked, and that's the pressure. If you're using a classic heat press that's going to close, you have two, you know, two platens that you're closing. You have a heated platen and you have a bottom platen, or both are, are heated. You really need to know about pressure. And we're going to talk about what the pressure is. But for me, that's the holy trinity of of uh, parameters, time, temp, and pressure. A lot of the times when it gets uh, forgotten, it can ruin a garment, it can cause a, a failure for adherence. There's all kinds of things that happen with pressure. So let's see what else we got. And before you to start decorating, I think something that's really important, and because I don't know exactly the audience, and maybe some comments will help me, we uh, have a, the most important thing that you can do and where you want to start is going to be with substrates, always with substrates. So the substrates in this instance, let's just talk about garments. You can have a t-shirt, you can have a bag, a pair of shoes, a belt, hat, all kinds of things that you can apply to, right? And those are basics. When I talk to somebody and try to troubleshoot a problem that may be going on, the first thing I ask is, what are you decorating? And the first response I always get is a t-shirt. <laughs> like, oh yeah, well, that's awesome. It doesn't help me. I don't say that, but I'm like, well, what kind of t-shirt is it? It's a Gildan or it's a Fruit of the Loom. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Glad you're using quality. What is the t-shirt made of? And what, no matter what the garment, if it's shoes or a bag or a hat or a belt, you need to know what that substrate is. And we're going to talk about materials and our materials, the HTV, but I always start with a, with a knowledge base of substrates because it's really important. It's really important that you identify what these are because that's going to drive what your selection is on the HTV, and it's also going to drive how that can be decorated. Not everything can be decorated with heat transfer material. Not everything can. Not everything can be decorated with screen print or embroidery or DTG or sublimation or any of the numerous digital or classic decorating uh, techniques and technologies that are out there. 
So I like to start with a polyester because polyester, everybody knows that it's cotton, cotton, poly, polyester. That's what most of the HTV will stick to. When you're looking at polyester, it can be a regular 100% polyester. Maybe it's black or it's white and, or maybe it's sublimated. Maybe it's a performance, a microfiber, a structured polyester, and all of those things start piling up on each other. So you can look at the tag and know that it's polyester, but that's about as far as it's going to be. It's got it's not going to say, hey, I'm a structured polyester. Hey, I'm sublimated. You need to be able to figure those things out. And familiarizing yourself with what you're offering and what you're decorating, if it's a T-shirt, again, I think T-shirts are obviously what people decorate the most. So I, that's my example. But if you're looking at a t-shirt that's 50-50 cotton poly, it's probably gonna be really, really easy to decorate. If you are looking at a t-shirt that is 100% polyester, it can also be very easy to decorate. When you start getting into what's known as performance shirts, performance garments, those are also called structured polyesters. Those are also called microfibers. And the weave on these materials uh, are easily flattened and easily damaged. They're kind of uh, fluffy in the weave. It's not like a cotton, which is if you press it, you press it too hot, you press it too hard, it's going to rebound. Cotton will. But the polyesters don't always do that. Even with a 100% regular polyester, maybe you won't scorch it when you press it, but you can leave a, a press mark a platen mark, anything that's on it, and it may or may not rebound. And there's a couple of reasons that happens. It can happen because it is a color that changes color because of the heat. And that's usually the reds and the blacks are the most reactive in that, in that aspect. Or it can be because it's too hot and it scorches the material and it kind of melts the material a little bit and it doesn't come back. And I'm sure everybody that's ever decorated polyester I know I've done it. <laughs> I have scorched something. I have torn something that was scorched. <laughs> and I have definitely changed the color in something. And I have learned about uh, substrates over time. It's just a matter of identifying what you have. And then there's sublimated polyester. We're going to concentrate on those. So you have 100% poly, which is usually a dream to decorate. Not always, usually. Then you have uh, a a uh, performance polyester and you then you have sublimated polyester and Mona's got a great trick <laughs> for identifying polyester that's sub sublimated well one thing that I've always um, advised my customers to do is to turn your heat press up to around 350 360 so get it on a higher temp than normal and then load your garment the way you would typically if you're going to decorate get a piece of craft paper and lay that over the garment, then clamp down your heat press for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then if um, once it opens, pull out the craft paper. And if you have ink on your craft paper, you know that that garment's going to bleed. And this just gives you a little bit more confidence that you're picking the correct material instead of guessing. Because a lot of times the blockers usually are a little bit more expensive than just the regular HTV. But I found that um, test to be very successful with my customers in the past. Yeah, and that was a tip that I had that I learned from Mona. And you know, I've been in this business for a long time. Like I said, we're both HTV super fans, so we have a lot of knowledge. But I'm always picking up new stuff. So if you guys have any tips or tricks too, well, uh, beware. We might counter them and say, no, that's not true. But uh, we'd love to hear those too. So talking about sublimated garment, sublimated garments are very popular these days. It is a dyeing process. It's a decoration process. And uh, it's used uh, generally for sportswear, for uh, uniforms. It's a really easy way to decorate polyester. It has to be 100% polyester to be able to sublimate the garment itself. And uh, when you try to decorate polyester, you can't always embroider it. Mm -hmm. You can't always screen print it. And HTV is an excellent option, which is heat transfer vinyl for anybody that's keeping track of the jargon. We're um, using HTV on polyester is just a natural uh, occurrence. So if you have a sublimated garment, you've discovered that it's sublimated. Maybe it's a 
uniforms that you're trying to decorate. You need a material that is either going to block the migration of that sublimation ink from the garment into the vinyl that you're using, the HTV you're using to decorate um, when it's heated, and that can be heated in the dryer, can be heated in a hot car, it can be heated obviously under the heat press. It's not just the pressing uh, process that can do that. And, uh, you, or you need to use a material that can be applied at a lower temperature for less time. However, the, using a material like that, such as the turbo, which is low temp, low time, low pressure, it doesn't guarantee the blockout. It can be used, but if you left the uniforms in the car, we're in Florida, so I can tell you how hot it gets here. It gets at least 140 degrees, maybe even hotter inside the car. That is not really high enough temperature to start it, but over time, if it's left there for you know eight hours in the hot sun, gets up to 140, maybe closer to 200 inside the car, which would be extreme, you risk the activating the sublimation process that was used to dye the garment. And that will interfere and migrate into your your HTV. So if you have a black and red striped uniform, now you're going to have black, gray, and pink striped vinyl that's been decorating that, that. So little things that that would help you are being able to use a HTV that you can cut and apply to a sublimated garment, and it has an, what's called an intermediate blackout layer. And for us, that's a material that's called blockout. And I'm going to grab a color card real quick. When you look at our color cards, right, and these are great tools to have. It's going to have the name of the line up there, right? It's going to have every color, whether it's a metallic or not. And then on the back, it's going to have all of the instructions on how to apply this stuff. And if you go online to read it all, you can find this information as well, right? So you, maybe this is not the best uh, illustration of this, but it has the time that you're pressing it at, the temperatures, there's varying temperatures on there, and it has the pressure. It also has what it'll go on, what it'll stick to, what it won't stick to, and things like that. So that brings us to our next uh, problematic substrate, and that is nylon. So nylon itself is very hard to decorate, especially with embroidery. Uh, you can't sublimate it. Uh, you may be able to screen press it. There are, I mean, screen print it. There are <coughs> options for that. But the best thing to use, again, on nylon and something that's not too heavily coated, and we'll talk about that in a second, is uh, HTV. Again, HTV is, uh, comes in printable form, so you can do a graphic uh, photo resolution logo or photo or team logo, whatever it might be, or you can just use single color material. And... Uh, when you're working with nylon, there's a couple of tricks. You have to preheat the garment. It must be preheated because when uh, nylon is exposed to heat, it shrinks. So you want to start that shrinking process before you apply the, uh, the HTV. Because if you apply the HTV to a cold nylon, the nylon's going to shrink and you're not going to have that, that specific area where you want to apply the transfer. So preheat for 10 seconds. And then you put the uh, transfer on that and you let that dwell for another 10 seconds. And then you remove that and remove the liner warm and then a post press for another 10 seconds. And then you're done, it's, it's ready. In between that, we suggest that you use either a you know, Teflon sheet or craft paper or parchment paper, anything like that to protect the garment. The garment sometimes, especially nylon can have pull strings or grommets or zippers and things like that that can that are plastic and they melt. So you want to always protect the garment. Plus I think it's a good idea to protect your garment, especially nylon. Right. And then um, some of the materials that we're going to talk about you can use to decorate nylon. Because nylon either needs a specific special adhesive to get it to anchor nicely. Okay. So we're going to transition now. If anybody has any questions, please ask them because I'd love to answer questions about uh, what we're, what you're looking at, what you're decorating, what kind of issues you've had, and maybe there's something that I usually say that I forgot today. You know, I want to give you all the information, but sometimes 
my uh, my presentations, our presentations, are driven by questions. And we know we're going to have a question and answer session at the end, too, so you have that. So we're going to start talking about uh, the materials that we talked about. And we're going to uh, do uh, some application, too, but I would love to, love to show you how some of these weed. And um, maybe we're going to show that down here, so that banner might be right in the way there. I don't know if we can do that because I need I'll need that area. Thank you. <laughs> um, for the our most unique, revolutionary, and in, innovative material recently is the turbo. Turbo comes as a colored material, so it's single color like the color card that I just showed you, mm -hmm. and it also comes as a printable. And some printables that I can show you, uh, maybe you've seen before, maybe you haven't. If you know what I'm talking about, are this is a usually a white, opaque, blank canvas, and uh, we partnered with Regional this year to do the Pantone colors of the year instead of introducing gray and yellow, which we had in our lineup already. We did this really cool uh, lumberjack plaid, and then another uh, plaid pattern here, and I love it. They're gorgeous. Right, and you could do so much with something like this. You have a blank pattern. This is a turbo print. And then of course, now we're into the holidays and I love the uh, patterns that they're offering this year. They're really pretty, you should check them out. But why do I talk about this? So turbo print, you need to have a digital format, digital uh, print printer. So it's solvent, echo solvent, latex, you have to have the big printers. It's not like an inkjet desktop printer that you can print mm -hmm. in. and uh, But you can do whatever you want. So you need a special color to match a, uh, a church fundraiser for a sponsor that they have. And you want to be able to print their logos. Or maybe you have a single color that you want to print that's not in the offering or in anybody else's offering. right? You could take that blank canvas and either go and ask for it to be printed or print it yourself. And I think that it opens up a world of possibilities. So on the printable side. And then when you get to the single color flex, turbo is incredibly unique. It is low temp, low time, low, te uh, low pressure. So I've said that at least three times now, right? Mm -hmm. So traditional HTV uh, applies at 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And we, uh, apply it for about 15 seconds, depending on the garment, but the manufacturer uh, recommendations and parameters are 15 seconds, and it's medium pressure. So something like turbo, you can still apply at 320 degrees, but you apply it for three seconds. And I'm saying three, mm -hmm. three seconds, instead of 15 <clears throat> seconds, three seconds. And maybe that's not a world of difference for some people, as far as production is concerned, but if you're doing high volume production, it is definitely a game changer. But more importantly, it's a game changer for the substrates because on the low end, you can apply the turbo flex at 265 degrees for five seconds. It's two seconds more, but it's still a third of the traditional time. So these, uh, the, the turbo is perfectly made and was developed mostly for the changing substrates mm -hmm. when we, we really started seeing a lot of the performance polyesters. And when I say performance polyester, I'm talking about Nike Dry Fit, Under Armour, things like that. I'm sure you've seen those. And it is crucial that you have a lower temperature because it stresses the material and you have the lower time, the less time, because again, it stresses the material and the lower pressure because it stresses the material. Mm -hmm. Either you're cooking it for too long and the dwell time or your or your temperature's too high and the press time or your pressure is too <clears throat> high. And while sometimes it may recover if it's a regular 100% black polyester that you're used to seeing, you probably won't leave a press mark on it if you do 320 for 15 seconds for medium pressure. But on a performance polyester, it's gonna leave that press mark. It may even scorch it and it's not rebounding. So you're gonna ruin your garments. And a not, not a lot of people, maybe you can have a nice big square on there that nobody notices, <laughs> but if it's a logo and you have a big square around it, 
I don't think anybody's going to love that. So having the turbo is an awesome product. So I'm going to weed some of this. And I know it's probably going to be a little bit hard to see it. But this is turbo. It's already a pre-cut design. Okay, we have a really nice little tip uh, trick that we actually put into our material that the score lines are visible in the weed. So you can see it a little bit better. I still need to put my glasses on because I need glasses to see anything up close. So I'm going to weed this. And then you can tell me whether you think it's quick and easy. So I'm leaving it on the table. Best practice, always weed and pull the material that you've uh, cut from the liner. Don't do this. You can do that, but it's not good for it, and you're going to have more trouble that way. So I'm just going to weed this real quick. Let's see how fast I can get it off. I'm not nervous at all. <laughs> so this came off in almost one piece. I had one little tear on it. Okay, and that little tear came down here. I'm going to finish weeding it so we can kind of look at the time frame on it. There's some centers here that I need to get out. And let me get them. See how quick it is. None of it's lifting. It's on a self-adhesive liner. So my, uh, my cut areas that are staying or aren't lifting. I don't have to worry about ruining the design if it's really fine. And I'll show you something later that's got a really fine, you may not even be able to see it on the camera. That was pretty quick, right? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? It was. We went seasonal with our, <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out where the best place to put it. Anyway, that's Frank. Frank is Polytape Turbo's mascot this year. And it was pretty quick. And um, it doesn't tear real easy. It's got a really nice stretch to it, this material. And it's still in an unfinished state. The polyurethane's finished, but because it needs to be applied, it's still raw, right? Mm -hmm. Once it's applied, it's going to be done. And we're going to do some bigger applications in a minute. But I think we'll weed one more just so you can see it. And I'm going to weed in metallic because metallics are traditionally a little bit harder to weed because of the uh, raw materials in them. And let's see if it gives us any trouble. First, I need to get on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> this is a favorite color, too. It's the flamingo, I believe. Yeah, tell me uh -huh. about that. It's really nice metallic, great for tone on tone. There's a lot of really good colors with CMR that this marries up to. So, I did the outside very quickly. And if anybody is a pro at weeding, which I'm sure you are, you can tell me how, how nice this weeds. <clears throat> right? The only thing that's really hindering me and slowing me down is that I need to find this cut areas with my eyes but even so <clears throat> look at even the smaller parts aren't coming apart there's no tear in it i had a little tear in one of the centers on the f for the polyflex getting these rest of the centers here there's one two three of them here plus the centers on the design and it was pretty quick done except for this little straggler pretty That's good great. right you see that if I hold, oh, look, I'm to go this way. <laughs> I hold it over there. It's a little pumpkin. Another one for Halloween. And this is a gorgeous color. Mm -hmm. We do love the flamingo. Mm -hmm. And it's a new color that we introduced this year. It's gorgeous. All right. So that's uh, Turbo. Let me also talk to you about the application, the universal application of this material. So Turbo is cotton, cotton poly polyester, acrylic blends, lycra, spandex, uncoated nylon. We'll talk about coated nylon if you want later in, in the Q&A. Uh, leather, pleather, like PVC <laughs> and polyurethane fake leather. It also applies to Gore-Tex neoprene. And uh, if anybody knows what those are, you, you would see those like in baseball gloves, golf gloves, ski gloves masks that's you know some of the uh, material that are on there and uh, the uh, also if any there are any crafters out there it'll apply to wood which is a lot of fun it looks really good and it's a great material to be able to decorate wood with canvas canvas is an organic so it's 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 pretty easy things that it will not apply to are 
heavily coated nylon because it's just, it's impregnated. It's like it has a durable water repellent on it or maybe an anti, uh, antimicrobial, anything like that that may interfere with it. But it'll stick on dry wick material. Mm -hmm. It'll stick on uh, cotton poly blends that, or, or maybe even a rayon where you might have three materials in, excuse me, a tri-blend that has rayon in it. So you have three different materials in there. It'll stick to just about anything. And because you can use a lower pressure on it, you can avoid the press marks because you can apply it at low temperature. Again, no scorching. And then the time element. So I want to show you the time because I think it's a huge uh, visual on it. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the heat press. Mona's going to talk to you for a minute while I get over there. It's only right <laughs> here, but so there's no dead time. And please, I don't see any questions yet. There's going to be people hanging out after the after this for us to be able to do that for you. Yeah. One thing Meg was talking about earlier were the, you know, differences between your polyesters and your cottons. And one, you know, reason that the polys are so troublesome at times is because you have a polymer thread versus um, a cellulosic material, which cotton is. So cotton, linens, all your natural fibers have a cellulosic fiber. So it's basically there's a hole. So there's a pathway of air that can get in there and actually that's why sometimes when you press a red cotton shirt, you have that, that mark and then you see it dissipate. It's because that air is able to flow through there and the fiber actually puffs back up again and goes back to its natural state. You don't have that with the, um, the polyester because it's a polymer fabric. There's no cells, there's no open space and that's why that um, thread will flatten. So, um, and I know that everybody probably runs across different garments that have like coatings. Sometimes the coatings are topical or they're woven in. So if you're ever in doubt that you have a coating on there, maybe a antimicrobial or waterproofing, um, spray it with I alcohol. I say denatured. I think Meg has isopropyl. So try both. I mean, see which one works. But um, a lot of times, if you just spray the area that you're applying to, that will help with some of those um, issues or possible issues that might crop up. Yeah, and an another way to, uh, well, a really good way to test for any kind of DWR, is what it's called, <coughs> durable mm -hmm. water repellent, anything that's going to be a rain guard or a scotch guard, things like that, that might be in the, the soft shell jacket or even in some of the polyesters. And there's also ink <coughs> uh, waxes that are used in mm -hmm. the mills in the, the thread creation and the fabric creation weaving process that makes it easier for the needles to work. Sometimes that, that the, the wax washes out after first wa wash, but you want to decorate your substrates before washing them first. And we'll, we can talk about that mm -hmm. in the Q&A if mm -hmm. anybody has any questions about that too. But you can drop a couple of drops of water onto mm -hmm. the substrate, onto the garment. And if it beads there like a freshly waxed car, it's treated in some way, shape, or form that may prevent or prohibit the anchorage of the HTV to the substrate. Mm -hmm. If it soaks right in, you're probably going to be just fine with that. That's a really good test and a, and a trick. It Most is. people know that. So I'm going to do a three-part, and it's not a layer, it's just a three-part uh, logo. We're celebrating 20 years this year at Polytape USA, and we have a special logo. So not only is placement really important, right? My first placement, you always start with your base or the largest part of your design. And for me, it's for this, is this right here. And I'm going to get as perfect as possible because I don't want to waste time. Just I'm going to get perfectionist. I'm going to get it just right. <laughs> I'm going to get it on there as well as I can this time. But I want to show you how quick it is. So this is set for 15 seconds. Let me change this. I want to show you how um, how fast this is. So now I have it set for three seconds. It's at 320 for three seconds. This is cotton that I'm decorating to, and this is the turbo. So I'm going to close this, and I can't even talk to you before you <laughs> have to come up, okay? So it's crazy. Fast. So the turbo is hot, warm, or cold peel. I prefer the warm because it's not as aggressive for the peel when it's cold. And I know that it's stuck there. And you can just rip it right off. So that was a like a lukewarm. Now, since it's a three-part design, I have to 
get it all lined up nicely. And I have to put them on separately because the, the spacing between the end of the logo and the, the beginning of the, of the bottom part of the logo is, is just too close for you to be able to trim it. Like I mean, these are trimmed really close, but I cannot apply them together because there's too much overlap. Mm -hmm. Leaves a mark in the other vinyl, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. An indention, I should say. So I know where this goes, but look how long it's taking me to line it up. But I want it to be perfect, right? So a little bit more time setting it. But and look, you get that. Amazing. Ripped it right off. There's nothing on it. Nothing on it. And this is the last part of the logo, and I'll show it to you. And then we can critique whether or not it did a good job on it. Because I like to know. F word eyes is on. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good. You'll have nothing to compare it to. I do have a shirt that's on that I'm going to time on. So there we go. Three seconds. It's done. I don't have to post press it. If you want to post press it, because that's your deal, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you see some lifting in it. It melts right into the fabric. You can hardly feel this vinyl. And it's so soft. That's the one thing that I hate about mm -hmm. um, all the virtual stuff. And we'll have we'll see you next time the um, at the Elevate Expo, whenever that might be in Salt Lake. But you can come and see the material in person. So I'm going to do something that I think is a really good, uh, especially since we're uh, in this media. I'm putting this on for 15 seconds. And I'm gonna close it, and we're gonna we're gonna talk for a little bit. So you know I'm Meg from Tolly Tape. Now I'm the director of sales and marketing for North and South America. I love my job. I told you. Oh, we're done. Okay, that was 15 minutes. <laughs> so I got a little bit through letting you know who I was, right? And even though you have already been exposed to three seconds, let's do it uh, again. So hi, I'm Meg from Polytape. I am a, oh, <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Turbo. Turbo yep. is your number one friend. It'll work for just about anything. It's fun. It's interesting. Wait, I'm going to put this over here. Put it down the way. Excuse me. Come on, you guys got to have some questions on Turbo. No questions yet on Turbo? Nope. Did we talk about Not it? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. I dropped something. So that's Turbo. I'm going to apply some other stuff in a minute too, but I want to at least show you what do we, yeah, because I don't want to run out of time on being able to show you this other stuff. We also make our own glitter. We have an excellent glitter. It's really easy to weave. It's really easy to apply. And it's got great brilliance on it. And there are only a few glitter manufacturers in the world. We happen to... Do our own. We 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 mm -hmm. we, frap, we produce and manufacture our own glitter. I started it because I wanted to make sure it was definitely glitter because we have a smooth glitter. This one has texture. All right, so I'm going to weed this, and if anybody's ever weeded glitter, you will know how difficult it is. And I've got small lettering on the top, and a whole big design in here, lots of lettering, and I almost got it all off in one piece. That's always my goal when yeah. I'm doing something like this because it just looks so good. Oh, come on. I, I, I weeded that. The stuff doesn't tear. Mm -hmm. I have to get some centers out and clean it up where the only part where it did not come off in one piece. But if anybody's ever weeded glitter, you know how difficult it is. Yeah, I've weeded a lot of different it. types, and this is amazing. It weeds with such ease. Mm -hmm. And again, another attribute to speeding up your production, yeah. whether you're home-based or commercial-based, that production, you just think how many more garments you can get, even in that 15-second to 3-second. You could probably get two more garments um, yeah. pressed and, and completed with ease. Right, I'll finish up later. We have a lot of gorgeous colors in our glitter line. I think this is a little out of date. No, this is this is this is look at all those pretty colors, including neons. Gorgeous, right? Really easy to cut. You can cut this on a on a craft 
uh, cutter if you if you needed to. And if you have a bigger cutter, professional cutter, you can cut it on mm -hmm. that as well. 65, uh, a 60 degree knife on that. That's best for it. And then just like anything else, test it, test it. That's another tip and, and trick that I like to say is a tip and trick, even though it's just best practice. Always do a test cut. Nobody wants to. I don't want to. We're the manufacturer. We run uh, a couple of different bigger uh, plotters in here. And then we also have the little Cricut Mini, which is adorable, and uh, some other craft cutters. And no matter what, you might be, because you, you're switching maybe from a glitter that is twice as thick or maybe even three times as thick as the Turbo, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to use the same settings, but the knife's going to be different, but your offset's different, your center's different. Doing the test cuts takes a second. For most machines, it's just a matter of pressing a button that's already on there, and it doesn't waste much material at all. And I have saved myself a million times being able to do that mm -hmm. because either it allowed me to check one more time to make sure I mirrored my design before I cut it, <laughs> right? <laughs> just a little thing. Or it actually was off center a little bit. The off, you know, it needed to be corrected and, and you needed to change the pressure just a little bit because it'll still cut. It'll likely still cut. But if you get a perfectly cut design, they weed like a dream. Mm -hmm. They weed like a dream. And for some of our stuff, the, the let me show you. If they, um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it, but I'm kind of hoping you can. The, oh, do I have it here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can go over there too if you want to switch it. There we I'm go. I'm not even sure if you can see it, but the the detail on this, can you see it, Mona? On the yes. Uh huh. The detail is just amazing. I can turn it around so it doesn't have as much. There you go. Clear. And then you can see the yellow spots. That's the kind of detail that you can affect with our material. It's very hard to do. To do. Very hard to do because it's hard to weed. Maybe you can cut it, but you can't weed it. And, it, and it's very discouraging. Again, so that's the back. That's the hot melt side. But at least you can see the detail in there. Turbo is a game changer. Definitely. So do we have time to do um, maybe one more application? I know we're getting ready. We've got 45 minutes. We want to do a, 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 a combo uh, glitter uh, design. It's lots of fun. Should I do it? Definitely. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> So here's the parts of pieces. One, two, and three. Oh, over here. Three, <laughs> four, five. There's five, six, oh, six. oh, wait, seven. Seven layers. But they're not layered. They're just parts and pieces in here. So we're going to do this on black because that's what it looks best on. I'm in a mess. That's all right. I'm sorry. I'm used to it. We'll <laughs> I know she wants to get up right now. And, <laughs> yes, she wants to get now. But it didn't make a mess. So we're going to do the first layer here. I like doing it on black because of the design. You don't need to preheat the garment. I mean, you do sometimes if you think they're going to be humid or wet in any way. Mm -hmm. But hopefully you don't need to. So we're going to start with, I mean, it's really going to depend on the design. But most of the time, you're going to start with the largest piece of the design. Okay, like I said, this is not layered, so this is side by side. And in a design that you're doing like this, if you want it exact, I would do it all together in a single color. But if you can have a little bit of forgiveness, like the, this design's going to have a little bit of forgiveness in it, it's not lining up perfectly, then you're going to have a better finished product. So when you're layering, the first couple of layers that you put down don't need to go the whole time. This is glitter. So it's 15 seconds application. It doesn't have the turbo hot melt on it. 320 and it's on medium pressure. And I, we already have the, um, the pressure set. Yeah, so it's on medium pressure. 15 seconds is a long time, but I'm only gonna do it for half this time. I need to let it cool for a minute because it is, uh, it is glitter, right? So it needs to cool for a second before we peel it. But I'll show you that I can still peel it. And because it's not completely pressed, I need to be careful. Normally, if this was cold, pressed it for the whole time, I could rip that off. But it's not. And I don't want to start now having a problem on my first layer. 
And I will tell you that I made a shirt similar this to this the other day. And I messed it up because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and I peeled it too quick. So this is our first layer. Okay. Now we're going to go back here and do the second layer. Now for this, it's a matter of, of the guidelines. You know, what's the best thing? The, the next two layers for us is obviously you're going to be this next layer here. So one of the larger pieces in it. And because there's a little bit of forgiveness in this pattern, in this design, it doesn't have to be perfect. I want to get it as perfect as possible because it's gorgeous when it's finished. And when you're layering something like this, right, I'm going to use craft paper because some of the areas are exposed that I've already applied. And when I put that down, I set it as, as close as I could, and then I started kind of pulling the fabric underneath it to get the perfect placement because this does have a self-adhesive liner mm -hmm. on it, so it'll stick to the areas that you want it to stick on. So instead of having to lift the wall design again and then reapply it, lift and reapply, I'm moving the shirt around the material, not stretching it, just moving it. Okay, same thing, half the time, so doing about seven seconds. Mm -hmm. This is a 15 second. It takes a lot of time, but the results are amazing. Yeah. Then I want to cool it down a little bit before I peel it. And best practice again is not to peel it in the air because then you're you're peeling it and it's aggressive off of either, either side. Do I need to do it again? Because it's not on there all the way. So We'll do it one more time. And the craft paper made, made a difference. I'll do eight seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah, the heat. pressure's pretty high on this. I've got it on five, which is a little bit mm -hmm. higher than where I would need it. But because I'm feeling it cold, it days are good. Yeah, I need to. So let's try it again. I'm not going to lift it this time. Just going to kind of let it cool here for a minute. And see, and this is the exact layer. <laughs> oh the goodness. moment of truth. And I would love to tell you that all the materials are exactly the same and the calibrations of the materials are exactly the same thickness. But they're not. Just like all heat presses aren't built the same. Yeah. So you have a lot of variables that you always have to take into consideration. But exactly. <laughs> So these last layers go a little bit more quickly. And if you want to talk it off, you want to please it. Right? Sure. So see, the layers are getting smaller. And I shouldn't say layers. The other parts are getting smaller. <laughs> so we're going to put this guy in first because I've done this design before, so I know what the best cue for this is. And it's a pretty nice high contrast color. So it allows for easy placement because everything else is going to be dictated off of these next few pieces. It does get a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more difficult to apply because you need to have your placement perfect. Covering it, I'm going to do nine seconds. I don't want to lose any pieces. We need like a little keyboard. Yeah, we do. A little I don't yeah. really need some other surfaces <laughs> and stuff on there to make it messy. Okay. And I'm going to come have this layer. I know that the goal from experience, takes a little bit less time to cure. There you go. Looks good. Another layer done. I'm getting a little bit faster. That's why I let you do this one. I know you did it last week, so yeah, <laughs> you're familiar with the right. different parts and pieces of our lion. I think it's. Um, so a little. It, it, you think, you know, you're putting it on and you're like, ah, oh, it's thin, it's not thin, I don't know what's wrong with it. It's the stupid design. No, it's not. It's probably you. And I know it is because I have the same issues. I'm like, God, oh, it's not perfect. But you cut it, you know it's perfect. But lining it up is not just a matter of putting it on and getting one corner done. You have to have all the corners lined so that when they cross each other, everything's good. That's why it's nice to have a little bit of forgiveness mm -hmm. in the design that you're doing. 
but pull just a little bit lift the corner to make sure it stayed because if not then i'm going to throw that liner right back down and press it again got it just a couple more layers we're almost done this one's hard because it's tone on tone and it's important it doesn't have to go down this it's important to get it right because the next two are really high contrast and not the focal point of this design Get it right. Yeah. Get it and I love our glitters. Not only are they high quality, but Polytape started out as an adhesive company. So there's always that um, security knowing that our adhesives are the best. And, you know, the, the glitter flake does not flake. It's super easy to weed and um, doesn't tear. So it's a big difference in products that I've used in the past. I love the quality of the Polytape. This is the hardest part. The, <laughs> the eyes. The eyes. <laughs> this is not a Don't want a cross-eyed lion. I almost uh, applied it as well. <laughs> it would have stuck to the craft paper. All right, I'm really excited. I can't wait to say, guys. I think it's fabulous. And while it may seem like a lot of work, glitter is always a premium. Glitter is mm -hmm. always a markup. Glitter is always a good add-on. So you can do, uh, you can layer this over turbo. You mm -hmm. can um, layer it or do it in combination. That last press was the 15 second mm -hmm. full press. So I know all of it's on there, including the last. Bring it over here. Let that cool. And we'll show you. Pull that right off. Pull that right off. And look what we just made. Beautiful. Look at this, gorgeous. You could put that on a pillow or on white canvas, anything like that. It's really pretty. It's sparkly, it's fun, it's, it's multi dimensional, and it's round. <laughs> I have this shirt, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> I love it. All right. Good job. I would love to get some questions. Questions would be, uh, would be fantastic for us right now. Because I think it's important that, well, for us, I will tell you that it's really nice to be able to get the information from everybody because it's, we haven't been able to do a lot of shows mm -hmm. and limited contact with people. And it's just one of those times that it's like that, but all of our innovations, all of our needs, all of that is generated from users, you, people that use the material. You know, we can think of awesome brand new colors all the time but maybe there's a color like, hey, you guys don't have a baby pink this or a baby pink that. Or, um, you know, I'm really trying to uh, decorate a, uh, a golf bag. What do you guys have? And I'm like, well, what do we have? If we don't have anything and you're trying to decorate that, then somebody else is having that same issue. Maybe it's on a golf bag. It could be a, you know, hockey or whatever it might be. So any questions that you have for us actually helps us a lot too. Questions you have? Mona's going to read them to me, and uh, or if you want to see something in particular, because we do have some uh, some stuff that's decorated that I could show you, but it's always better to see it in person. So you have to go visit Regional Supply for that. I'm going to come back over here. Do we have any questions? Not yet. No. I'd love to hear from you. Does, is there anything specific that you have? I know. Um, I think with Emily had asked us mm -hmm. a question. If um, if this could be used on 100% cotton. And if we were talking about turbo or maybe glitter at that time, most of our materials are going to apply to cotton. So you should be able to uh, use just about anything. The only thing that I can think of that may not, well, there's really nothing. Yeah, Everything that should. we have will apply on mm -hmm. cotton because cotton's a workhorse. You can't ruin it. You can't sublimate it. We do have some stuff that you can sublimate. So that would be the only thing. But these are things that you would apply to cotton. So if you had a cotton uh, shirt that you did want to use a sublimated design on, you could use one of our sublimation products and uh, sublimate the, the material and then apply it to the cotton. No questions? Anybody? 
<laughs> Letting you off easy today. I think everybody's like, oh, it's lunchtime. Yeah. For us, probably. it's fast lunchtime. Uh-huh. For you guys, it's coming up on it. We're on the East Coast, so we're two hours ahead of you. Well, thank you for everything. Everything was, uh, I, I love the people at, uh, at Regional Supply. They have a really good knowledge base there. Um, we've been able to to train and and uh, and and work with their reps, and they're very receptive. Mm-hmm. And we have in that turbo line, there's 40 colors. So that's that's a lot of colors to to choose from. And I know that that a lot of them are the brights and the metallics right. and some neons in there too. And what size do you have those in? I think there's. I know that there's a 15 inch. Right. Might be a 20 inch. <clears throat> think so and the different links you can uh, find everything on the uh, on the on the regional supply website they have a great website they cover a wide area I know that you are uh, familiar with it and when we come and visit when we do the next exhibit with them which hopefully will be one day soon uh, please come visit us and see the materials but in the meantime go in and check them out and Feel the turbo. You cannot feel how soft it is and how wonderful it is until you feel it. Don't forget you can layer. Layer on top of turbo. The only um, yeah. thing that you cannot do with the turbo on the layering is neons and metallics and brights really need to be that top layer because they're much more reactive and everything will go well if you do it that way. Well, thank you. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Eric. Thanks to everybody at Regional, and thanks to everybody that participated with us today. We appreciate you. Good luck. Thanks for your time. It was nice to to, uh, work with you all, and happy crafting and producing.